Good morning, good morning. It is a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it. Also, I have the power because I'm connected to the power source, Jesus. I hope you all are having a good, nice, cool fall morning. Mm -hmm. It feels so good out there, and I just thank God for it. Listen to this. See, we cannot afford to put God in a box. We just cannot afford to put him in a box. This is a true story. In a Sunday school class, uh, preparing for Sunday school, um, this man got up to, to do a testimony. He had gone through a recent divorce and it was going through a whole lot. So the sun, Sunday school uh, superintendent was more concerned about, you know, they had to take the, take the role, how much money was given, and all of that. So as this man was testifying, and she released everyone, no one moved, because they were caught up in the moment with the Lord. So after all of this was over, she ran to the pastor and said, Pastor, Pastor, the role wasn't taken. All that wasn't done. And he said to her, take a piece of paper and put it in the box on the board or whatever and say, the Lord came. Don't be so traditional. Don't be so one-minded that status quo, this is the way it's got to be and we leave God out. Mm -hmm. God came that, that morning and delivered and set free. So we want to make sure we don't do that. Our Bible decree. This is my Bible. God's word. And in it is eternal life. Because his word is my guide. I will add no take anything from it. And we thank God for that this morning. On this uh, Thursday, this is 6 at 5 o'clock, Simple Life presents its new ministry. And it's called Let's Talk with Google. I'm Google. Let's Talk. And it's for church leaders, a church of religious organizations, whatever it is. If you leave from the parking lot to the pulpit, this is for you. When we come together and share and learn, and it's not single, it's not griping, it's not fault finding. But we can learn from one another. There's some things you are going through that I have experienced. I can help you. Of course, there are things that you have gone through. And as being a, just a five-year-old pastor, many things I can learn from you. It's all about learning from each other, growing, networking in that sense, that God's name will be glory and that people will be blessed. So please spread the word. I have it out on social media. Spread the word for this Thursday, and it's um always the first Tuesday of the month from now on, unless there are some changes, that we come together at 5 p.m. on our GoToMeeting app. If you have any questions, please call me, 804-621-5636. So I want to really put plug that in there. Come on, help us learn from each other. Help us spread the gospel like it. We should do. So visit us on, of course, Facebook, our website, YouTube for Rock Faith and for Simple Balanced Life. Okay? Thank you for your prayers, your gifts, your support in us doing the work of the Lord. I'm excited because God is up to something. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for blessing us as we come together this morning. For to share your word. Dear God, that your name is glorified. And lift it up and you'll do the drawing. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're thankful this morning. Why are we here? Why are we here? Last week, Pastor Jay has spoken. Where do we go from here? But I'm asking now, 
Why are we here? In the first place, why are we here? And the subtitle is, why am I here? So the question is, why are we here? That's for mankind. But why am I here? Very important question. Here's some points. Why did God create, create us from the beginning? Why did he? B, what should our response be to him? It's easy to say, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. But to follow through with our commitment is another thing. It grieves God when we don't do what we were created to do. We're the only creation he breathed his spirit into. And lastly, the church shouldn't be a social club, networking, or political platform, etc., etc., etc. It just should not be. Turn to Revelation, the fourth chapter and the eleventh verse. And the point is, God created all things for his glory. Get your Bibles out, get your, your devices out, and please follow you are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and are and were created. See, we were created for God's glory. All the creation was done for God's glory, and we thank God for that. You are worthy, O oh Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. And we thank God for that. Isaiah 43, 7. We are here to represent, represent God's love. We are here to represent God's love. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created, and and created in the Hebrew is bara, meaning select or choose. So God, everyone is called by my name who God select or choose. Okay, for my glory, I have performed, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. He made man. He made creation. So we ask again, why are we here? We're on planet Earth. All approximately 7 billion people are on planet Earth for God's glory. But then we have to turn around and say, why am I personally here? Why am I in service this morning? Why am I in church this morning? Is it to for social networking? Is it to see who has what on? Is it to complain and ping a finger point? Is it to, is it to, is it to whatever? No, it should come together. And I, and I use this analogy. And uh, on Andy Griffith, that I like, we still look at Andy Griffith reruns. Oh, Gomer, Goober, Goober, worked at the filling station. See, I'm used to that filling station from the country, old tractors and all of that, and old cars, and you would go to the filling station, and the man, the person would come out, check your oil. Mm -hmm. your windshield wipers, all your other fluids, and they will actually come out to your car and pump your gas. Those days are far gone. But that's the filling station, and especially for the farm equipment, a lot of times the farmers had these big 500-gallon tanks on the farm, fuel for the equipment, the tractors. And, they, and I remember they would go to that tank, and there was a hand crank and fill it up. We had mules as well. And I remember that early in my life. Um, I remember that way back in the 60s. And, but you still have to fuel the mules up. You have to feed them, give them water, take care of them because they had to be fueled. So we go to the fuel station, to the barn, and feed them so they can do the work, the plow, and the pulling of the plows and the other equipment. Well, the church is, why are we here? We're here today on this Sabbath 
to get fuel, spiritual fuel, to go through the rest of the day, rest of the week, doing what God has called us to do. That's why, why that is the reason why we are here today across the land in church to come to the fueling station to get refueled because the farmers fuel the, the tractors and the mules up and they expend the energy. And sometimes you get little fuel breaks, you know, put a little fuel, a little extra to it. So throughout the week, we need to still be fueled up in our personal times, in our private times to get refueled. Because whether we go out and minister or we sit on our do nothings, we're losing spiritual energy. Okay? Genesis 1.27 God didn't make any mistakes. See, God didn't make any mistakes when he created you. God didn't make any mistakes when he created me. God didn't make any mistakes. And we thank God for it. He did not make any mistakes. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. We're the only one who was created in God's image. In the image, and in Hebrew, it's selim. It's a resemblance or representative figure. So we were created to represent God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. He didn't create, um, he created man and female. He did not create man and man to be together. He did not create woman and woman to be together intimately as husband and wife. He didn't do it. But we were created to represent God. That's the main thing. In his image, again, the monkeys, the bears, the giraffes, and all of them, were not created to represent God. We were created to represent God. And I thank God for that. If we turn to Ephesians 2.10. See, we were divinely crafted. Think about that. We were divinely crafted. I remember back home in the country, of course it was nine of us, I'm next to the youngest, the knee baby. My brother, Larry, who was two years my senior, we used to make out of real clay figures, and Larry was much better at it. He made a man head, which was stood in our school for many, many years, uh, and other things. I, I wasn't that good. But we crafted them to whatever figure that we wanted them to be. So God took us out of the dirt and crafted us. So we were divinely crafted. For we are his workmanship. And, her and workmanship in the Hebrew is mosaw. A source or product. So we, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. We shall walk in them. Divinely created. God didn't create us to be knuckleheads. He didn't create us to do the things we do. We know that sin came in. But God created us meticulously. In 1 Samuel 12, 24. Then we should reverence God. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. But consider what great things he has done for you. Fear or to reverence God. People today, even believers, many times we do not even reverence God. We don't fear God. We don't honor God. We don't, we don't do it. We don't do it. So we really need to honor God. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth 
with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done. We need to consider the great things that God has done for us. We need to consider that because he is so great. And we thank God for that. Okay, in Romans 5, 8 through 9, God demonstrated God's demonstration of his love. Okay? But God demonstrated his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from we shall be saved from his wrath. See, God demonstrated his blood, his love to us. Yet we were sinners, yet we rejected him. But he demonstrated his love. Now, it's hard for us to demonstrate our love to people who, has, who have really helped us out. But boy, to demonstrate love to someone who has wronged us, see, that's not a man's character. We need Jesus. We need Jesus to be able to help us out. And the question again is, why are we here? That's for mankind. But then we get it personal. And I, and, I, and I ask the question, why am I here? I'm here to represent God. Now, here's the problem. We'll try to represent God when we're in church. When people that we know are around. But what about when we're in at home behind closed doors? Do we represent God? What about on our jobs? Do we cheat on our taxes? What about going through the, the oh, here's a good one. When someone at the, ca the cashier, the clerk, ring you up and they skip one item. And for me, whether the self checkout or the person rings me up, I go ahead on, I pull to the side, walk to the side of my car, and I scan over my receipt. See, I meticulously put my items in the basket and I mentally record the the cost. And sometimes I literally do put the price down. But I mentally record the cost so I know about the average. And there have been times that the person charged me the wrong price. Let's say the price was $10.15. They charged me $8. I have gone back to the person. I have left the store. Uh, there was a time I had gotten home. I took it back and let them know. You didn't charge me enough. See, I fear God. I fear God. Uh, a, a true story. Back in the 70s, when they're supposed to have the gas shortage, and you had to uh, fuel up on odd days, some people, and even days. I think it was according to your Try to remember your license plate or your social security card. I forgot how it was. I was a young, young person. Then they came up with the machines, gas machine, where you, you put the money. Like in the car wash, you put the dollar bills in the gas tank thing. And so you will get what they put $5, $10. And gas then was like 40, 50 cents a gallon. Oh, we love, wish for those days. But what the guys, people start doing, they start putting tape on the end of the bill, push it in, then pull it out, and the tank will register it and get the fuel. See, that's cheating. And I'm almost certain some church folks did that. I just, I just know it. But see, God is watching. See, we're here to represent God in every facet, in every area, area of our lives. 
You may look around, we may look around, and is anybody looking? Yes, someone's looking. God is looking. God watches. His eyes are roaming. So we are here collectively and individually, but I'm here. Like I always say, take what's in the book, the word, and put your name in it. So I don't have to look around to see who's watching me because I know who's watching me. I know whose I am. I know who I belong to. See, in literary writing, we need to ask these questions. It's the four W's and one H. Who, when, where, why. And how? Who created us? When? How? Where? All this how? We need to understand these questions. See, we need to ask questions. How did God do all of this? And some of these questions, I don't care how much you ask, we won't know. And that's where faith comes in. God would have us to walk by faith and not by sight. So, why are we here? Are we here just to kill time? Is it are here with this tiptoe through the tulips? Are we here just to pick daisies as we go along? We are here to represent God collectively, created that way. But then individually, we have to ask ourselves, I ask myself, Guli, why am I here? I am here to represent God. In the good, in the bad, and the ugly. And that was the movie. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We need to represent God in all things. Every area of our lives. I had put it out on social media last Wednesday. I had gone to the doctor, my urologist. And I have been praying Lord, is your will, I don't want to take this last shot. Please, I don't want to take this last shot. Post-cancer shot. Because I had to take one pre-shot in March of 2020, the surgery in August of 2020, then every six months, a shot, which should have been five shots. So, when I had told the nurse, I certainly hope I don't have to take this shot today. She said, well, I got it ready for you. She's smiling. But talk to your doctor. When I talked to Dr. Park, and he looked at my stats, he said, you're doing good. You still got to come back every six months to check, but you're doing good, and you don't need the shot. Because the shot has so many side effects that sometimes it, it, it's rough. I won't get into it. It's rough. But I just praised God when I saw and I did me a little cut step. I was just thinking, God, why am I, why did God allow me to go through the cancer? Why? We're living in an imperfect world. I had believed God prior when I did the first biopsy. It's not cancer, Lord, but either way, I'm going to praise you. Then I had it, and within the next year, I had to do another biopsy. And this one, it was said, you got prostate cancer. But see, in the midst of all of that, I was determined to represent God. I got a chance to minister to the, the doctors, to the nurses. I mean, I used the opportunities to testify of God's goodness. I even put it on social media as I was going through some of the worst days of my life. Dealing with this, the worst days, I put it on social media because I wanted you all to see, by the grace of God, going back from, and forth to the emergency rooms, and this is happening, that is happening, going through radiation, then the effects of that. But I wanted to represent God. Even going through all of that, I wanted to represent God. And even on New Year's Day, when the report came, said, you got diabetes. I'm like, oh my goodness. 
But you know what? A few months later, as I had testified, I was lying in bed and got up about two o'clock that morning, and the holy and I, I felt a sensation in my body like a burning, and the Holy Spirit would reveal to me, "You are healed." Now some healings are instantaneous, and some as you go. Well, this healing is as I would go. Well, went to the doctor a couple weeks ago. And he said, hmm, you're doing good. In other words, keep doing what you're doing. And then he said, oh, you pre-diabetic. See, I'm already healed. But see, there are some things we have to do to help our healing. And I did that. But I know I'm already healed. So I'm saying even in that, at, to the doctors, I was able to testify on God's goodness. Went to, to get the blood work on Monday for my urologist, see my urologist on Wednesday. The uh, person who took my blood, I forgot the name of the, what is, what is it really called, but I had a chance because to minister to the nurse, to that person. Then she gave me her number so I can talk to her to minister to her on the phone so she can get in contact with my wife as well. See, I use, we got to use every opportunity to spread the gospel. That's why we are here. That's why I am here. That's why you are here to represent God in the good, the bad, and the ugly. And my uh, Pastor Jay uh, joking to say my thing, in the ugly. And that's really bad. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 19 through 25, holding fast to one's conviction. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the, the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated, consecrated us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let me stop right there. I said it on our midweek service word study, and I said it again. See, there was a veil in the Old Testament, and the priest had to go in and do the sacrifices. And they had to constantly do it or at the appointed time. And if the priest wasn't right, when he entered the Holy of Holies, I think he had a sash, a rope tied around the waist, I believe. And that, if that priest, the high priest wasn't right, he'll be killed. And the people on the outside will have to pull him out. But we have a high priest in Jesus Christ who died once and for all. And when he died, the bell was split in twain, split in two. So, we don't need to go to a high priest and confess our sin. We confess our faults to one another. We need to confess our sins to God. We, I confess my shortcomings to me. If I do you wrong, make a mistake or whatever, I confess it to you. I, 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 I repent for me for doing it. I go to you. Then I go to God. Don't go to God first because you have injured someone. So you need to go to that person. We don't need Mother Mary. Thank God for what she did. Mother Mary was no more than me, you, and anybody else. I mean, in the flesh. But he, she had an awesome job, though, to bring the Savior in the world. She was the only one who could do that. But Mother Mary is dead. Mother Mary cannot answer our prayers. Mother Mary cannot intercede for us. Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand side of the Father interceding for us and thank God for it. I thank God. So we need to hold fast to our confession that Jesus is Lord. Hold fast to our confession that he delivered and set me free. Hold fast to confession that the, 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 the temple, the curtain, uh, the Holy of Holies, was split because when Jesus died, as I said, 
that was split. So we go straight to Jesus. And we thank God for that. So let me go back. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest, we know it's Jesus, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full of assurance of faith, have our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience. And our bodies washed with the pure water. We took a bath this morning. That's good. But we need to be washed by the word. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. My hope is in Jesus Christ and his love and his righteousness. For he who promised is faithful. We make promises and we intend to keep them. But God Father God, in the name of Jesus, he's the only one that we can take it to the bank. We can put it in concrete. What he promised, he will do it. If God promised you a spanking, don't you worry, you're going to get it. If he promised you the goodies, this and those things, you'll get it. Now, if he promised you a spanking, then if we repent, repent, and like in Israel, God will many times step back. But don't you worry. Whatever we do, there still are consequences. Here's the part. And let us consider one another in order. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together, like in church today, virtual or in person as in a matter of some, like they did in the Old Testament, but exhorting one another, lifting one another up, that we may help one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. What, what day approaching? These evil days. I mean, it is crazy. I know our foreparents said that, but it's even worse now. So we need to exalt and to encourage we don't need to finger point. Because what happens when you finger point? Pointing that big thumb right back at yourself. But also we need to exalt. We need to rebuke. But we need to do it all in love. We're talking about why are we here? We're here to represent God. Individually, you, we need to ask ourselves, why am I here? Why am I in church today? Why am I, why are you watching this service virtually and many other services? Why have you gathered together with the body of baptized believers, with the church folks? Is it to see who's in church? Or is it to, uh, you're going to come in so no one, the follow-up committee, the ministerial committee, whatever you want to call it, and you've been missing MIA in for a long time, you decide to come so they won't call you. But you call yourself a Christian, a believer. Now, every church person is not saved. Sometimes animals, I've been in the church, birds got in there. Uh, Sometimes other critters, lizards, come right in the church. Through Christ. That lizard, that bird, those critters are not saved. So everybody that walks across that door, through that doorway, is not saved. But come on to church anyway, and prayerfully, something would happen. The old song said, I went to a meeting one night, and my heart was right, and something got a hold of me. And it was the Holy Spirit. It was where God captured me. So come on. But we need to stop playing with God. We are here to represent and represent him well. Now, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Now the conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, or uh, means to reverence, and keep his, his commandments, 
for this is man's all. Again, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is man's all. In other words, this is the will of God for man that we fear here, that we keep his commandments, that we love when we're injured, that we love the brethren, the sisterin, that we love the house of God, that we love the sinners, that we love the ones who do us good, that we love the one who do, does us bad. Because we are here to represent God. Think about this. Suppose Jesus got back at those who persecuted him, ridiculed him. And even with the two thieves on each side of him, and that one said, well, you can't even save your own self. Suppose Jesus said, man, I'm through with this, like we do. I'm through with this. Uh-uh. That's the last straw. I'm coming off this cross. I ain't dying for you rascals. And you, the one that said that, to hell you go. Because he was on the way, both were on the way to hell. But the one had an epiphany, a paradigm shift. He was basically told the other one, man, you need to shut your mouth. We deserve hell and damnation. But this man, there is no fault in him. So we deserve hell and damnation. But because of the grace of God, because of the love of God, Jesus stayed on the cross for us, for this rascal, for this heathen before I got saved. All of us were heathens and lost, but because of the mercy of God, he hung there. And that was a painful death. He was separated from the Father. In other words, God had to sort of like turn his back because, see, he cannot look at sin and be pleased because Jesus became sin for us. So why are we here? We need to represent Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, the movie, I'm trying to think of the, um, the crucifixion by, um, well, I can't think of his name, three years ago. And they were showing the crucifixion, what Jesus went through. Passion of the Christ. The, pa the passion of the Christ, of the Christ, of Christ. And that was heart wrenching. That was heart wrenching. But that was just makeup. That was Hollywood. India call it Bollywood. Okay? But think about the real. The real crucifixion, the real pain, the real bloodshed. He, Jesus did it so we will have eternal life. So we need to represent him well. That's why we are here, because we're made in his image. But that's why I am here, to be able to represent him my corner. So let us go throughout this week, this rest of this day, go out through the week and realizing I need to get my act together. Like I said, sometimes I look at Google in the mirror and I talk to him, boy, get your attitude together. Calm your emotions. Take a chill pill because suppose Jesus act the way that I do. Suppose, ask this question. Suppose, ask yourself this question in the mirror. Go to the mirror and sometimes. Suppose everybody act like me. Everybody in the world, approximately 7 billion people in the world, and ask you, suppose everybody act, act like me. What kind of world will we have? Woo! Food for thought. 
So that is it. We thank God. Remember, I'll say this again, then we're going to close out. Don't forget to join us this to this Thursday at 5 p.m. on our GoTo Meeting app, where it is our new ministry through Simple Balance Life that is called Let's Talk. Let's talk with Google. Again, I'm Google, but let's talk so we can learn from each other what we go through in the church and so we can edify Christ, so we can lift him up. Don't forget. But the most important thing, I pray your heart has been pricked today that you will ask yourself these questions. Why are we here? Then why am I here personally? I'm praying for those who never knew Christ. I'm praying for the backsliders who were on fire for the Lord. I'm praying for those who have never received the endowment of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, the power of God. I'm praying for those who want a renewal. Want to shake off what they're going through and be renewed in Christ. And if you're looking for a church home, check out Rock Faith. Oh, I live too far away. We, we have the technology. Then, of course, we're still praying for our own location. See, God got it all in control. But the main thing, if you never see me again, if you never come to the church, I want you to make a proclamation that this is a day that I'm giving my life to the Lord. This is a day that I'm coming back to the Lord. This is a day I want to grow in the Lord. This is a day I want to help somebody else grow. This is a day. If you are the one, stand up. You're at home. You're watching virtually. Stand up. I'm standing. Stand up. Literally, stand up. Those who want to go to a meeting, stand up. I'm looking at you. Are you standing? Stand up. And let us lift our hands up. Father, I want more of you. Father, I give my life to you. I want to want to represent you in the good, the bad, and the ugly. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that is it. That is it for today. Until we meet again. Same place, same time. But remember this. Enjoy every moment of every day to the fullest intentionally. Now, here's how we close out our services. You cross your arms in front of your chest. And this is not a gang or fraternity or sorority. No, this is the shield to protect us. Shield against the enemy because he is out there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you as we close this service, part of the service, and we will continue on for a while longer on Go To Me, and that we invite from this platform, as we close it out, that those will sign in also on Go To Meeting. But the main thing is to God that we just thank you for the word today. We thank you to God as we close out from this virtual part that will continue to represent you well. That your name be glorified, that souls be saved, delivered, and set free. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Have a good week. Stay with the Lord. Thank you very much.